Welcome to today's episode of the Arena Sports Show with me, your host, Helga Schutz. We've got a full program today with rugby, cricket, football and much more. But let's start off with rugby. And Namibia lost 71-3 to New Zealand at the Rugby World Cup on Saturday. Well, Namibian coach Alistair Kutsia gave us this update on the match and the way ahead. Look, the spirit in the camp is still very high. We've had a fantastic open training session at our home base. Uh, the people turned up in droves today. I think uh, it's <laughs> the first time we've trained in front of 1,500 plus people. So it's been great for the morale. Uh, the players enjoyed it. And uh, we worked on a few things that we could fix, uh, which came out of our, our review against the All Blacks. Um, you know, so we need to work on our execution. Uh, just in short, we've had 12 entries against an All Black side, which means 12 entries into their 22, and which only converted three of them, and, and it could be better than that. And, and, and that's why I said happy, because we created, but we need to convert into points once we're there. So that was the focus at training uh, uh, today. And looking ahead of, uh, uh, you know, to France, that's exactly what we need to do. And if you look at Uruguay, those half a chances and few opportunities they got against France, they converted and they scored the points and they got the penalties. And uh, I suppose, you know, uh, we will probably play against a much stronger side, uh, French side, I, 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 uh, we'll have to wait and see. But again, it's about us and making sure we get to the right team and the right plan for our last game. Very excited uh, playing the host in Marseille, it's going to be one hell of a hell of an atmosphere, atmosphere because it would be the first time that the host union will support their team, which is to be understood. But uh, other than that, uh, they've been magnificent supporting uh, Namibia. Maybe not uh, because of anything, but their bravery and the way they, they stuck in the fight. We're still on rugby and Namibian centre Leroux Malan unfortunately broke his ankle in that match against New Zealand and he has been replaced by Lloyd Jacobs of Kudu's Rugby Club. Let's hear more from Alistair Kutsia. Uh, yet again, there's an opportunity for someone else. So we have called uh, Lloyd Jacobs to, from Kudu's Rugby Club to join, uh, join us in, in Marseille. He'll be flying out tomorrow night and we're really happy to, to welcome him into the group. Uh, I'm looking forward to his, uh, his presence here with us. Great opportunity for Lloyd. He's done all the hard work throughout the Mzanzi Cup and uh, he was involved in the in the last game against the Bulls. So he, he, he understands the way we want to play and he's, he's the right guy, you know. He doesn't cover Leroux, but we've got JC Freiling who can cover at, at uh, 13 and Buffy Johan Dessel could cover at 12. We've got Okino and Freiling then and Danko Berger and Buffy still to cover those two positions for us. And obviously the winger Divan can cover at left wing and that is where uh, uh, Lloyd can come and he can cover fullback and winger so the versatility of Lloyd is, is really important for, for us and the group. Well good luck to Leroux Malan, let's hope he recovers soon. Moving on to football and the Deb Marine Namibia Premiership got underway over the weekend with matches throughout Namibia. In Vintuk, the defending champions, African Stars, got their campaign off to a winning start when they beat Orlando Pirates 3-1. And after that game, I spoke to Stars midfielder Awilo Stefanos and uh, Pirates midfielder Rian Kluter. So let's hear what they had to say. Uh, I think um, we, we started off the, uh, very well today. Um, unfortunately, Pirates, Pirates in the second half, um, they came at us, but um, for the first half, uh, the first 15 minutes, we were all over them. And then I think after the goalkeeper, the, the goalkeeper was out. I think they started getting confidence from the second goalkeeper. But overall, um, we had a good game. Right, and now Willow, um, you guys were playing in the African Champions League, but losing out to Power Dynamo. So how was that? Yeah, I think um, uh, after winning the first game in, in Johannesburg, I think um, to be honest, I think we as players we are too complacent when we went to Zambia, you know, thinking it, it's going to be easy that side. But unfortunately, when you play Africa, in Africa away games are not uh, easy. But then um, they scored one goal and they disallowed a the goal from us. But um, it, it is part of football. Um, we don't have VAR there, so I think it was a good experience for most of the younger boys that, that that's never been to, to the bigger competitions like cup or national team level. Yeah, it's nice to be back. 
uh, football, the thing that I love to do after so so long time, I'm back again. But uh, overall, it was it was a good game. Nice feeling to be back again. Right, but you guys losing there three one. So how was the game for you? It was unfortunate that we lose three one. You see, it's just these small individual mistakes that we make that starts capitalize. But you see, Stars is an experienced team, and we, our team is really a young team. Eh? But we give a good fight. It's unfortunate that we concede those silly goals. And you could have seen it was it was silly goals, individual mistakes. We didn't pick up. Concentration was lacking. But it will come. It will come. The, the season has started. But it will come. Uh, we are not in a we are not in a hurry. Okay. And Ruan, you really impressed there with some beautiful touches. The crowds also cheering you. So um, you think you still got a lot to offer the game? Uh, yeah. This is. I look after myself very well, and I think I can still give it. Why not? Yeah. But uh, it's the first game. Let's see from the second game how the season goes. But I think I can still offer. Well, we're still on football, and in another match on Sunday in the Deb Marina Mobia Premiership, Tigers got off to a winning start with a 1-0 victory against Civics. Well, after that game, I spoke to Henrico Burtis, former Brave Warriors striker, who's now also the assistant coach at Tigers. So let's hear what he had to say. Yeah, I think the game was, the game was really tough. Um, a bit of rustiness from outside, um, lackluster, losing balls. So I think in all, not a good game to watch for the spectators. But for us, I mean, three points and a winning start. I mean, that's what we want. Uh, we worked quite hard the preseason. So I think just to get off the mark. And uh, I think from here on in, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of positives. And there's a lot to work on as well. So I think from here on, it should be, should be better. Right, Enrico, and you, of course, had a great career in South Africa as well, but now going into coaching, so how did that come about? Yeah, I mean, now it's on the other side, you know. Now you need to, you need to as a coach, you need to try and organize the players, and, 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 and they must play to a structure and organization what we work in training. So I must say I'm enjoying it, but I think the grey hairs will, 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 will start growing now a bit more, a bit more faster. So I, I'm enjoying the new, new challenge. I am the assistant and I'm also responsible for the attacking players like the strikers and the attacking midfielders uh, to work on finishing and, and attacking play and that. So that, that's my role at the Tigers uh, Sports Club. Great. Well, hopefully they will uh, learn your attacking skills. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. Something can wrap off. But a uh, great, great bunch of, of lads. Um, uh, some really, really good youngsters which are eager to learn. And uh, I'm just happy to, to, to give back a little bit to Namibian football. Um, which, which has given so much to me. So I'm glad to be back in local football and um, hopefully uh, long may, may it continue. Let's move on to cricket and the Richelieu T20 tournament got underway over the weekend with several matches at the United Field in Vintuk. On Friday, Vintuk Jets beat the Namib Desert Lions by 24 runs and after that game I spoke to the captain of the Jets, that's Jan Freilink, so let's hear what he had to say. Yeah, I thought it was a good outing for us. Uh, we ticked all the boxes that we wanted to tick. Um, tested the waters with some of the under-19 boys. Um, it's good having Divan Lecoq back, scoring runs, taking wickets. Um, yeah, all in all, uh, a very good day for us. Right, and uh, Jan, you were now recently with the Namibian team in Pretoria, playing quite a few matches against the Titans. So how did it go there? Yeah, it was a great tour for us. Um, in terms of prepping for our qualifier at the end of November, also got a one-day game in, and it's always nice um, competing against guys like the Titans. Um, and they've got loads of proteas in their squad, um, so it's always nice to teach yourself against those guys and, and see where you are. So, how do you feel about the upcoming um, qualifier for the T20 World Cup? Yeah, very excited. We've obviously got the franchise tournament at the moment. Um, we uh, a lot of guys can put the hand up for a place in the squad, and that's very exciting. Um, and yeah, it's just a great initiative by Cricket and Movia putting this together. Well, we're still on cricket, and in another match on Saturday, the Atosha Wildcats beat the Fish River Eagles by five wickets. After that game, I spoke to Nicole Lofty Eaton of the Wildcats. So let's take a look. Uh, yeah, it went well. Um, we started off really well with the ball. Um, 
and that's all starting from square Benji Kong with myself and all, all that good spells so kept the uh, scoring of runs that low I think they ended up on 112 for 6 or 7 so it was a job well done by our bowlers and then JB Kotzer played a magnificent, magnificent innings of 47, 48 I think um, to get us right into the chase of the game and yeah we just kept running away with the game from the momentum of his innings so what a way to start this tournament for us I think. Yeah. Great. And uh, Nicole tell us you were in England now uh, playing for Hucknall Cricket Club so how did that go? Yeah, look it went well. Um, we finished six in total, or six out of twelve teams in the Nottingham, Nottinghamshire Premier League. Um, personally it went quite well. I scored about 1400 runs, 40 wickets I think in 35 to 37 games probably. So personally it went quite well. Um, yeah, it's something different than playing cricket in Namibia. Um, trying to improve my game as much as I can. So yeah, it's definitely a stepping stone for my future I think. Right, and now with the um, Africa uh, World Cup T20 qualifiers coming up, um, how do you feel about that? And um, will you be in? The, will you be in, in the squad? Do you think? Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, I'll be in the squad. Um, I'm going to have to put in some work now to get myself um, into the starting eleven. So, um, but I think our, our chances are really good qualifying this year. Um, we've got Uganda and Zimbabwe, which is quite a tough game. But we have beaten both before, so why can't we do it again? Well, after the weekend's matches, the Itosha Wildcats are now on top of the log after winning all three of their opening matches. So let's take a look at the weekend's results, the log standing and the top batting and bowling performances. Moving on to futsal news and the Namibia Futsal League is in full swing once again with numerous matches taking place at the Vintuk Showgrounds over the weekend. Well in one of the main matches of the weekend the log leaders of the men's Premier League quality beat Ballers 5-2 and after that game I spoke to the opposing captains Eduardo Solunga of quality and Elmer Deli of Ballers so let's hear what they had to say. Uh, we, as we anticipated, it was a very intense game. Um, they are a very, very tough team in title contenders, but we are coming from a five-win unbeaten run, so we, we had what it takes to make it six out of six. Yeah, and it was a very intense game, very tough. You know, football decision goes both ways, but we did what we had to do to take the three points. Right, as you said, six out of six still leading the log. So you think you can win the title? We have to. I think I said it in previous interviews, we are going to win the league. This is our season. We are going to give whatever it takes to make sure we collect all points, even unbeaten. But we have to win this season. And we look forward to winning this season. Right, Eduardo, and the game ended. It was a bit uh, hectic. The emotions running high. Tell us about that. I mean, the opposition team, there are some of their supporters and stuff. They went uh, trying to, I don't know, argue and do something to the ref, yeah, um, I didn't see much about it, but I had to go and break it up and come run back to the interview, 
Okay, well, good luck, Eduardo. Thank you very much. I feel like there was a bit of luck uh, or unluckiness that came from our side. Some goals that we let in shouldn't have gone in. Certain things we should have just controlled our temper a bit better. But uh, fair play to the other team. They won. Uh, nothing much we can say about that. And we just need to move on and go from here. So how does this put you on the log and are you still in the title race would you say? To be honest we, there's still some games left, we go game by game. So yeah we drop points today, the next game we have to just pick up. So we take it game by game because it is still a lot. Uh, still some games to go, still a long time to go so hopefully we can catch up. It's now two games that we lost points but we move on, we just have to keep our heads up. Right, and Elmo, right, see you guys weren't very happy with the, they were the ref at the yeah, end. Yeah, uh, there's some decisions we feel went against us. Some, uh, yeah, we just feel like some calls went against us that led to some crucial things, some crucial things that uh, shouldn't have happened. And, yeah, so that's all I can say about that. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you. Well, after the weekend's matches, quality remain at the top of the log after winning their opening six matches. So let's take a look at the latest log standing and all the weekend's results. Moving on to mixed martial arts and Damien Miller became Namibia's latest African champion when he won gold at the MMA African Championships in Luanda over the weekend. Miller won the gold medal in the senior men's flyweight division after beating Angola's Mufuana Mbungo via unanimous decision. Veya Hinda, who won gold in 2022, had to settle for silver this time after losing the featherweight final to Celio Diogo of Angola, while Namibia's Geraldo Bock won bronze in the featherweight division. And congratulations to Damien, fantastic achievement. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. But as usual, let's take a look at some of the weekend's action photos. From me, it's goodbye. Thank you.